Today on the John Akerberg Show, we will examine the topic, Christ among other gods. Maybe you've heard it said that all religions are equal, but do you really think that's true? If you think that all the deities are the same, or that all religions agree on the essential points, then this program is for you. Religion, if it is worth the name, claims to make factual statements about spiritual reality. This means that every religion has the responsibility of giving evidence for its truth claims. Such evidence should be accessible to believers and non-believers alike. Christ presented himself as the one and only qualified Savior who was able to bring men and women to God. Today we will examine some of the evidence Jesus gave for his claims. We will also answer the assertion of those who say that no one religion can be the only true religion in the world. My guest today is Dr. Erwin Lutzer, pastor emeritus of the Moody Church in Chicago, Illinois, where he served as the senior pastor for 36 years. He is featured on radio programs across the country, speaks internationally, and is the award-winning author of numerous books. We invite you to join us for this important edition of the John Ackerberg Show. Welcome to our program. I'm John Ackerberg. We have a very interesting topic for you today, and that is the search for truth. It's interesting when we talk about different religious leaders that Jesus made the statement, I am the truth. And that's going to be what we're going to be discussing today. And we're doing it with uh, one of the best in the country. My guest is theologian and philosopher and best-selling author, Dr. Erwin Lutzer. He's been pastor emeritus of the Moody Church, a historic church in Chicago, Illinois, a huge church right downtown Chicago. And he's the author of many best-selling books. And one of them is Christ Among Other Gods, which is our topic today. And some of the things that we're going to talk about are in that book. And Erwin, uh, the fact is, is that often when it comes to religion, people say some funny things. They say, everyone has their own truth. Is that possible? John, the topic that we're talking about is absolutely critical, not just for religion, but for our society and our culture. And once again, I want to invite all of you who are listening to make sure that you stay with us because we're going to be discussing truth. We will be discussing the claims of Jesus and we'll be explaining why all the religions of the world cannot be true. And the idea that I have my religious truth and you have your religious truth and both are true, well, that's contradictory. And we'll also be talking about the claims of Jesus. Thanks so much for joining us again. Bring your doubts because we're exploring these ideas together. You have a great illustration in your book about this thing of people saying, I've got truth, but your truth is a little different from mine. You've got your truth, I've got mine, let's just get along together. But you have a very good illustration about when people go to a bank. Yeah, when people go to a bank, you know, you can't say, I have $10,000 in your bank, and the banker says, no, you don't, you only have $50. Well, whose truth are you going to accept? <laughs> you can't say, well, my truth is my truth, and I think I have $10,000. The simple fact is this. John, this is critical for people to understand, that the same laws of logic and truth that operate in the real world where we exist also are true for Christianity and other religions. For example, two plus two is equal to four. Is that just a Western idea? No, it's also an Eastern idea. As a matter of fact, two plus two is equal to four is believed throughout the whole world. And so there is such a thing as universal truth and we must recognize that and we simply can't have our own truth. I want to apply this to 
uh, a situation that you went to. In Chicago at one time, in fact, 1993, uh, there was the Parliament of World Religions that met in Chicago. And it wasn't too far from Moody Church, and so you were curious, you went over there, and uh, they gathered some 8,000 religious leaders from all over the world. And again, 4,300 different religions that we listed last week. And um, they had three important presuppositions that you found out at this conference concerning truth. You want to share some of those with us? Well, one of the things that they emphasized was that no one religion has the truth. Because once you talk about the truth, then you're talking about opposition. And what they wanted to say is, don't count your beliefs as truth, rather count them as traditions so that you can give them up. I don't think you know this, John, but in the conference the very first night, they said, hang on to your chair. Hang on to the chair so tightly that you think if you let go, you'll go through the roof. And then they said, now let go, nothing happened. And in the very same way, you should be willing to give up your doctrines because everybody has a share of the truth. John at the Parliament, they had a very interesting illustration. The man one evening said, I want you to visualize all the religions of the world. Think of a wheel. He said, at the level of the rim, we all have our differences, mm -hmm. but every spoke represents a different religion. And as we leave the level of the rim mm -hmm. and go to the hub, which he called the clear blue of sky, there we will meet. Well, this is a very fatally flawed illustration for a number of different reasons. First of all, it gives the impression that you can do with the spokes of a wheel, that you can do the very same thing with truth, which you can't. If you are going to use spokes for truth, then truth would have to be parallel. It would be like train tracks. But the second reason it is so flawed is because it gives the impression that we all experience the same thing at the level of the hub, and we don't. You know, the Bible teaches, and there are even people at the Parliament of World Religions admitted that sometimes people have mystical, demonic experiences. So how do we know that we're having the right experience unless we believe the right things? By the way, John, one evening when I was at the Parliament, I actually had dinner with some New Agers who believed that this was a good illustration. When I explained the gospel to them, I remember one person saying, we have never heard that before. And I want to say to all who are listening today, you may be in that mystical center, the clear blue of sky, as you like to call it, or at least as it was called. But it's so important to realize that we cannot find truth by looking within ourselves. Truth is objective. Truth exists outside of us. For example, when um, astronomers discover a star, they don't invent the star. It's not as if they uh, think to themselves, well, you know, there should be one up there because I looked into my own heart. No, they objectively found the star. In the very same way, truth exists objectively. So when we look at Jesus, for example, and we look at what he said, what he did, the miracles, we begin to realize that he does indeed stand alone and he has the right to say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. What an amazing statement. Yes. And he also said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. For many people who are watching today, John, I believe that it will be the end of their journey to some extent looking for the truth because we all want something that is true. Right. In our society, Irwin, I find a lot of people, uh, both in our world, in business, and in politics, but uh, also it's come over into the religious realm, and you found this at the Parliament of World Religions, 
that the word tolerance is coming in when you're talking about what people believe in terms of religion. Talk about what you found out. Well, first of all, there is such a thing, especially in the West, as legal tolerance. We all believe that people have the right to believe and to practice whatever they want and we respect them even if we disagree with them. But John, what I'm finding in society today is an irrational kind of tolerance. And an irrational tolerance is where I can say, I have my truth and you have your truth and they are equally true. But that's impossible. It's not possible to believe that there's only one God, namely in Christianity and Judaism, and at the same time also believe that there are religions with multiple gods and they are true as well. What people need to recognize is that the religions of the world actually contradict each other. If they were all equally true, we'd be living in a madhouse. So it's our responsibility to dialogue, to help people to understand why we believe what we believe. They can explain to us what they believe and why. But at the same time, we can't say that all of these religions and all of these people have their own truth. Maybe I can put it this way. We've moved from the idea of where everybody can have his own opinion to the idea that everyone can have their own truth. So I like to emphasize you can have your own opinion, but you cannot have your own truth. If you have some religious truth, it applies to me because truth has universality. Now let's get back to Jesus. Jesus made the amazing statement, I am the truth. Talk a little bit about what he meant. Now, with regard to Jesus, let's look at this more carefully. He just didn't say, I know the truth. He said, I am the truth. In other words, he embodies the truth. And then he said, and I am the way. Now, when you stop to think of it, if you need a guide, you're going through a wilderness, a desert, you don't know where you're going, you need someone to lead you. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. And then the amazing statement, no man comes to the Father but by me. And that, of course, is the point that is often disputed. Why Jesus? Well, as we explained last time, it's all because he is a sinless Savior. He made claims that indicated his deity, and we'll be discussing those in a future program. But we must understand here that Jesus cannot be put on the same shelf with all the other religious leaders. He yeah. stands out. And let me just jump in here. You made some tremendous points. They're delicate in terms of talking to the world, but people need to think about them. If we have to explore different religions, we would discover that they give different answers to some of the most basic questions. For example, is there one God or 330 million gods, as the Hindus say? Is there one God that is personal or is he impersonal? Is our problem sin or is it ignorance, as some religions say? Is salvation simply a healthy life like Shintoism says, or restoration to a God, like others say, or to one God, namely Jesus? Is salvation a release from a cycle of rebirths that you find in the East? And is there a heaven or hell? If so, what are they like? All of the religions seem to give different answers, and this is where People have to make a decision when Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody's coming to the Father but by me. That is an astounding claim, and that has brought many people, as they have thought about it and thought about who's making that claim, 
that they wanted to put their faith in Jesus. Now, take it from there in terms of illustrations that you've had with people in presenting that claim. Well, what comes to mind, John, is when I was riding on a plane one time, I was talking to this man, and God has put eternity in people's hearts. He knew that eternity was coming. He knew that there was a heaven and generally believed that there might also be a hell. But I said to him, do you know that when you die, you will go to heaven? And he said, um, he said, well, you know, I think what I should do is I'm doing the best I can. I said to him, that's your opinion, uh -huh. but how do you know? And he said, why is your opinion any better than mine? And I said, it isn't. My opinion is no better than yours. But then I said this, you know what we really need? We need somebody with authority to tell us the answer to this question. We need somebody who knows all things. We need somebody who knows God. We need somebody who can tell us exactly the way, the truth, and the life. And that's why Jesus is different from my opinion, your opinion. What really matters to people is His opinion. And that needs to be stressed. Yes, and people, Irwin, are hurting. They need help, okay? They need a God who can not only forgive their past, but give them help right in the present. And then with the COVID that's going around the world, because we're talking to 200 countries, there are some people that have got a new strain that's very dangerous, that in three days they can get it and die. And they want to know, can I believe in a God that will promise me he'll forgive my sins and he will take me to heaven? He can do that. Now, you've got some great illustrations about what God, the Lord Jesus Christ, can do for people that are hurting, that need forgiveness, but they don't know where to find it. I want to answer that question directly. I want to thank the many of you who have joined us. And now we come to perhaps what is the most important part of the discussion I've been having with John, coming to Jesus. Let me tell you that in Amsterdam, there is a museum. And in the museum, there is a painting by Rembrandt. It's called Night Watch. Many years ago, I actually saw this painting, and it is indeed remarkable. But in about 1971, a deranged man ran up with a knife and began to cut it. Of course, the guards immediately stopped him, but the painting was damaged. The folks at the, at the museum weren't exactly sure what to do with the painting. They knew it needed to be fixed, but nobody was sure that they would be able to fix it properly. So they just put it in a warehouse, and there it was. But there were some French artists, some French painters, who said, we can fix that picture. So according to the story that I read, it was actually taken to France, and there the artists and the painters fixed the picture. You know, as I was thinking about that painting, I was reminded of the fact that there are many people in the world who are damaged. You may be damaged because of what people have done to you. And by the way, you yourself may have done some things to damage others. We live in a very broken world, and people don't know where to turn. But you know, there is someone who can bring about a fixing in your life, if I can put it that way. There is someone who is able to repair you, to give you hope, all throughout this world, you'll still find many different tribulations, many difficulties. But at last, you will have found someone who loves you, who died for you, who was raised again, namely Jesus, and no other religious leader has ever done that, and he is able to save you from your sins. You know, when you come to Jesus Christ, the good news is that you will be received. 
The Bible says, as many as received him, to those he gave the authority to become the children of God, even to those who believe on his name. Now, I want to say a word to those of you who have doubts. Let me be very clear. It's fine to have doubts. If you're an honest doubter, you come to God with your doubts. Now, if you're a dishonest doubter and you're not really interested in the truth and all that you want to do is find out reasons why you shouldn't believe, then perhaps at this point you are in a place in your spiritual journey where I cannot guide you. But honest doubt, God always receives it. You know, there's a story in the New Testament that John the Baptist was in prison, and because he was in prison, he began to doubt whether Jesus was the Messiah. So he sent a delegation and said, are you the one that should come or should we look for somebody else? And Jesus said, hear all the miracles I'm doing. Go tell John this. And then Jesus said this, among those born of women, there is none greater than John the Baptist. Think about this. Jesus said that at a time when John was sitting in prison, doubting. Come to Jesus with your doubts. Ask him to repair you. Ask him to forgive you, to receive you, to welcome you, that you might become one of his children and you will be one of his children forever. You can do that. God has led you to this moment. I urge you to believe on the only one who's able to make great promises and keep them. Would you pray with me? Father, I pray for all those who are watching and listening. I ask, Lord, that you will work in their heart and show them that Jesus is not just the Savior for the Western world, but he's also the Savior of the Eastern world. In fact, he is a worldwide Savior for all who believe. We thank you and we love him. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Folks, I'm so glad you joined us. This last week I've had two 20-year-old boys that have said, can you help me? I want to commit suicide. Some of you are suffering in your heart and you need help and you haven't found it in any of the things that you've tried. David said, he, God, restores my soul. You need your soul restored. You need life, liberty inside of yourself, forgiveness. Only Jesus can give you that. Jesus said this, if you're in that condition right now, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's what Jesus will do for you. I'm saying, please think about it carefully. And if you didn't pray with Erwin, I would say pray right now yourself to the Lord Jesus. I guarantee you, he will hear your prayer and he will help you in ways you don't understand, but you will enjoy. Thanks for joining us this week. And I hope that you'll stay tuned because I have a personal word for you in just a moment. Stay tuned, John will be right back. Now, thanks for being with me today. If you've thought about what makes Jesus unique among the 4,300 religions in the world today, and you'd like to investigate the information for yourself that you've heard presented, as well as the facts given throughout this series about Jesus, I want you to know that we are making available all six TV programs with Dr. Erwin Lutzer on two DVDs for a gift of $39 each or both DVDs for $78. In program one, he explains why all attempts to unite Christ with other religions of the world are doomed to fail. In program two, how our prevailing culture of tolerance has altered even some of our Christian church's belief about God. Then in program three, why is it logically absurd to believe that all the religions of the world could be equally right? In program four, why does every religion have the responsibility of giving evidence for its truth claims that is accessible to believers and non-believers alike? 
In program five, we present the evidence for Jesus' extraordinary death and resurrection. In program six, the evidence that Jesus himself gave to show that he was the one and only qualified Savior who was able to bring men and women to God. Now, in addition, we're making available Dr. Erwin Lutzer's excellent 252-page book, Christ Among Other Gods. And this is for a gift of $15. Now, this is a tremendous book, folks, that is full of crucial information that you'll all want to read. If you wish to have all six programs on two DVDs, plus Dr. Lutzer's important book, they are available together for a gift of only $90. And if you live in the US, you may order right now by calling us at 1-800-805-3030. That's 1-800-805-3030. And you may call that same number any day this week, 24 hours a day. Or you may give your gift at our website at jashow.org, where we have a secure place for you to give your gift. That's jashow.org. And then for those of you that live in Canada, please call us at 1-866-746-5803. That's one 1- 866-746-5803. Or you may order at our Canadian website at jashow.ca. That's jashow.ca. Then, by the way, over the last several weeks, we've been raising funds to send audio Bibles to people around the world who have never had a Bible in their own language and have never heard the gospel. And you can continue to give to this valuable project through the end of January, and any audio Bible device that you order will be matched by our two very special generous donors. So if you provide one, two, or three audio Bibles, they will be matched by our two very special donors. And when we receive your gift, we will send you a receipt and a personal thank you. And folks, I'll appreciate your help very much. This program is sponsored by the John Ankerberg Show Ministries and is made possible by the grace of God and your faithful prayers and gifts.